Hey friends, so here is a quick little video on lipids. And actually, it's only going to be like part one, which is going to be on the triglycerides. So lipids, as we already talked about, are group organic compounds which structurally are, vary a lot. But they have one thing in common, and that is that they do not mix with water. They fear water, as in phobia, and we use that term hydrophobic. Later on, we'll find out that it has to do with polar and nonpolar ends, but that's something yet to come. But right now, it's we, as I said, mostly triglycerides. But besides triglycerides, we'll also talk a little bit about the phospholipids, which are important in cell membranes, the steroids, which would be things like cholesterol and certain hormones and certain vitamins, and last, the waxes. But let's start with probably the more significant one, at least in terms of, well, they're all significant, but triglycerides. So, the, so triglycerides are made up of either fats or oils. We talked about this class. And essentially, at room temperature, if it's solid, then it's a fat. And if it's a liquid at room temperature, it's an oil. Those, you know, you can melt butter and all those kind of things. But structurally, they're very similar. So there's butter, there's some nice oil. And the word triglyceride is very descriptive. Tri meaning three. And the glyceride part referring to actually a glycerol molecule. And so the makeup of whether it's a fat or oil is always going to be three something called fatty acids and one glycerol molecule, hence triglyceride. And not, don't get wigged out with, with drawings and diagrams because they're not going to hold you that too much. Plus you all have access to this when, on your site. But this is your typical kind of um, breakdown. So this first part here is a glycerol molecule. And then there's one, two, three, ah, ah, ah. Um, triglycerides here and you notice they're all drawn the same and we don't have to worry about carboxyl groups and all this other kind of stuff but just that's what they look like and here's what they look like when they get put together and it doesn't look much difference but you notice there's water over here and that's because if I go back to the next la first slide of this there's an OH and H and they kind of pull off and then the O and the C bond together same thing happens here and there's three of these connections which hence there's three waters and they bond together so this is a triglyceride it's kind of like this E-shaped thing in fact, here's in this little diagram, here was what was the glycerol, and these are the three, one, two, three fatty acids. So you kind of get this like E-shaped. Now oftentimes you hear about saturated and unsaturated fats and oils, and or I'll say here saturated and unsaturated and unsaturated triglycerides. Well, here are two different fatty acids. Remember, you take three of these to make a, a triglyceride. And you'll notice there's something different about the two. There's some things that are similar, some are different. I see a lot of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. At the end here, I always see this kind of carboxyl groupy thing. That's why it's an acid, which is also an amino acids, by the way. But what I want you to focus on is this straight chain of carbons here. And now this chain of carbons. And, the, and you'll notice that there's double bonds here. And, there's, and this one's got all hydrogen. And when you hear the term saturated, like... I can't watch another minute of this video or second because my brain's saturated with this. Well, that's one way of looking at saturated. If you have a sponge that's full of water and it can't take any more, it's full of water, it's saturated. Or in this case, you can see that all these carbons have hydrogen, so they're saturated with hydrogen. And these are not. They could, you could use one, two, three, four. I mean, you could add more there. So that's the difference. So what does that mean? Well, that's a saturated fatty acid, unsaturated fatty acid. When we go to then constructing our triglycerides, if I have a glycerol and it's made up of three unsaturated, excuse me, three saturated um, fatty acids, now we have a um, saturated triglyceride. And notice there's that E shape there. You're going to do the little E in there. But so this is saturated, so it's straight chain of carbons, all hydrogen. And here's another triglyceride. There's a glycerol, there's the um, three fatty acids, but notice these are unsaturated. And again, there's my E shaped, and these would be considered unsaturated. Now, if there was Two of these would be, and one was saturated, would be polyunsaturated. There's monounsaturated, but that you get the idea. Now, saturated triglycerides, general rule of thumb, tend to be solids, and unsaturated tend to be the oils and olive oil and things like that. And those are general rule of thumbs. They hold pretty much. So things like you know lard and Crisco and, and butter and olive oil and peanut oil, etc. Those type of things. And the way to explain that is actually pretty interesting, I think. If this represents a saturated triglyceride, and you see these straight carbons, and here is a couple, of, some, two, at least two unsaturated ones, and when you get those double bonds, they kind of go doing, and they bounce off in funny angles, and they get bigger, so, so to speak. So, so here's my little cartoon of a saturated fatty acid, unsaturated, actually, un, actually say saturated triglyceride, unsaturated triglyceride. If I was to stack them up, I could put, I, actually I think I have 16 of them right here, 
over here I have only eight of them. You notice these are closely packed in. These are spread out because they have to be spread out because those fatty acid chains are like pushing around. So therefore this one's more dense. It's packed, tightly packed and this is less dense and that's really what the difference between a solid and liquid is. When you heat things up they expand and they take up more space hence they're less dense. Mass divided by volume. Sounds like we're doing later this year. The other idea, generally speaking, as I said before, is that you know, then that tends to be fats, that tends to be oils. And the other thing about this, and this is again just a sort of general rule of thumb, that saturated triglycerides, the fats and the butter and all those kind of things, tend to be not as good for you in terms of cardiovascular and, and heart disease and things like that. And again, butter, lard, all that kind of good stuff. And the unsaturated, the oils and things, tend to be a little better for you. However, I think the key thing is moderation. I'll always put butter on my bread. I won't put a whole stick on, though I'd like to, but I put some butter on. And the same thing with, with life in general, moderation. So now we get down to the functions. And we talked about some of these already. Probably the most important thing is just the fact that it can be used immediately for energy. You can eat some fat and your body can break it down through cellular respiration and get energy. The other thing has to do with energy storage. And if you think of like a woodchuck eating a lot of food for the winter and storing all that fat on his little body there, and he'll use it later, break it back down for the use while it's hibernating. Now we think of people, we think of putting on fat this way, which is true, but there's another place that we store fat for later use too, and that has to do in your bones. In the center of your bones, there's red marrow, in this case, yellow marrow. And yellow marrow is essentially fat deposits there. You can actually tell a lot about animals that have died um, in the winter, if you see a, a kill, um, where they starve to death or whatever, because if you look at the marrow, if, if an individual is pretty healthy, or an animal is healthy, it'll be full of uh, fat here. But if it's been not getting enough food, that's going to be depleted because it's going to use its energy store. So storage, long term, ready to use. Another thing I mentioned in class was idea of being a shock absorber, cushioning joints. This is your femur and tibia and stuff. This is your knee, and here, sure enough, are some little bit of fatty stuff thrown in there. Um, kind of help with shock absorber. And last but not least, um, maybe not so much in humans, I did mention this, like insulation and buoyancy. So um, this whale here is in, could be in very cold water. It, the blubber stuff insulates it and also helps it float. And here's a picture of some Inuits, um, you know, stripping off some blubber there. And I think that's about it because I was only going to do the triglycerides first and then we'll do the other ones later. So as they say here, it ain't over until the fat lady sings. <laughs>